Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us today for our Training Tuesday. This is uh, session number nine, uh, Tips and Tricks for Finance, uh, and specifically targeted at Dynamics Now and Dynamics 365 Business Central. On the line with us is Jeff Goodwin. Uh, Jeff, I'll let you introduce yourself, and then I'll give you control of the presentation. Okay, thanks very much, Scott. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining. Um, Scott asked me to kind of prepare a bit of a demonstration with a few tips and tricks that I find helpful in in NAV and Business Central. Um, so I've I kind of came up with seven different uh, different things that I think are really useful. Uh, you know, I'm going to use Business Central uh, to demonstrate that. I'm just going to show my screen now. So I've got seven different things that I want to cover uh, that I think are really helpful. Uh, you know, using using Business Central, um, and uh, you know, it, everyone's on mute right now. But if, if uh, you have a question, you can enter it in the the chat bar, and we could try to answer it at the end. Uh, or uh, you know, if you prefer, you can follow up with me with me after. Um, all right, so so let's get started. So um, you can see here I've got Business Central open. It's just our demo environment. Um, one of the things that I you know really try to do uh, to speed up data entry is to try and use the shortcuts as much as possible. You know the F keys, uh, arrows. You know things that uh, I can use to keep my my hands on the keyboard, and it just makes makes things uh, a lot faster um, and, and so one of the things that I often see is you know a user will uh, you know they're trying to do some data entry they want to edit uh, a field and they tend to kind of you know click into the field and you know once you click in you can see my the entire entire field has been uh, highlighted so I could just start typing here uh, you know if I wanted to change that description I can just start typing and make that change. Um, but often, you know, we kind of get stuck here with the, the cursor, you know, in, in the wrong spot, um, or, you know, now, now I want to go back and try and highlight that to, to delete it again. Uh, so it just gets a little, a little clunky, like we're, you know, too many clicks, trying to use our mouse. Um, but I always like to use the F2 key. So the F2 uh, is the edit button in Business Central, and it's the same shortcut in NAV as well. So, uh, you know, that that's something that, you know, I really got used to uh, when I was working in, in NAV all the time uh, with the Windows client. I, I got really comfortable with that, with that F2 key, um, and it just recently, now they've added it to the web client. Uh, so, you, you know, you can see a lot more of those functions from the the Windows client that uh, some of the NAV users um, are more familiar with are now being added more to the to the Business Central web client. And so what I, what I like about that is, you know, when you use F2, it just allows me to toggle that highlighted bar on or off, right? So I can, you know, now I've got a little bit more control. I can keep my fingers on the keyboard. I can tab to the next field, you know. Uh, if I wanted to go here and just enter a new line, you know, I'll use uh, you know F8, which is another quick shortcut that just copies the the value above, um, and then tab to the next field. And now you can see I have my my cleaning uh, you know description is highlighted, so I could just start typing here um, and 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 start uh, you know overwriting that cleaning value, um, or I could. Maybe I want to do this line as an expense to the IT department, so I want to kind of use that same same description. So I might use F8 to just copy the value above, um, and now you know I, we know we can use F2 to toggle this on and off. Uh, we know we can use F8 uh, to copy the value above, um, but I can now I just the only thing I want to edit here is just the admin part. I want to put the a different department. Uh, so I so I can use my home home key and go to the beginning and now I can just delete that small part enter IT department and then carry on with the rest of my data entry 
So the so just to kind of to summarize that a little bit. So the F2 edit button it's available in Nav and now in uh, Business Central with the web client. It just allows us to toggle these values, the highlighted uh, field on and off. Uh, then we can use our home key to go to the beginning. You know, once we toggle it off, now we have our cursor. We can use the home key to go to the beginning of the description uh, or the end key to go to the end. So just real quick to uh, to toggle that on and off, you know, saves you from trying to use your mouse and, and, and highlight the value, you know, or, you know, you end up clicking in the middle. Just try and, uh, you know, something you can try later today, just, you know, using your keyboard to move through the columns. And then when you get to the to a column that you want to edit, you know, you can use that F2 key to, to toggle that highlighted value on and off. Uh, and then your home, your home, home key to go to the beginning uh, to the end. So that, that F2 edit button, that's something I, I typically use, you know, frequently um, and was really missing it from the web client until they, they added it to here, uh, here recently. So that's the first thing that I, that I think is, is uh, really key. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about uh, is the, the, uh, the menu, the list view. In, in NAV, we had that departments button, showed you all the different uh, uh, menu options, uh, you know, by categories. Uh, you know, only about uh, a year ago, uh, a similar list view didn't exist in Business Central. So they've, you know, within the last uh, six to eight months, they've, They've added the list view, which is this. If I click on this little these lines here, this shows me uh, you know a list view of everything that's on my home page. Uh, and if I wanted to explore a bit further, I can sh now I can see you know very similar to the departments menu in in Nav. Now we have the uh, the explore all uh, menu in Business Central, uh, which now I can just see by category. Um, you know the the search function or the tell me uh, the tell me function in Business Central uh, is really helpful if you know what you're looking for. Uh, but if you don't know, you know what it is, what you know what reports there are to offer, uh, this list view really helps. Just you know give you a summary of everything that's going on. Uh, but they've added something here, this find feature uh, in in the latest release. Uh, so if I wanted to look for something. I can just type it in, you know, and then you can see this nice highlighted blocks, you know, with the words that I'm looking for to make it easier to identify where, you know, what are all the options that can customer, for example. And then as we look, you can see some of these have a little circle next to next to them, and that's just telling you that, you know, this is just a uh, a collapsed uh, menu option. Uh, that within here is another another option, uh, you know, containing the the value that you're searching for. So the so the find the find feature something really nice that they've just added to Business Central, uh, and just you know expands on that ability to find something within within this list view. Uh, the next kind of shortcut that I I think is uh, is really uh, helpful is the bookmarks. Uh, if I open up this report here, cu customer top 10 list, you can see we have a little switch up here, uh, add bookmark to your role center. So this just allows us to, to create a shortcut uh, and, and place it directly on our, on our home screen. Uh, just up until this latest release, uh, the bookmark only existed for documents like sales orders, transfer orders, uh, you know, et cetera. And so now they've added that that bookmark to the reports. Uh, so you can, you know, now you can create shortcuts to reports and those other uh, those other menu options like sales orders, purchase orders. You know, if you are an accountant and you have the the role of uh, you know your your role is the the accountant role, uh, but maybe you have to post uh, you know the monthly inventory updates. 
so you, your your home screen doesn't contain the the physical inventory journal or the item journal. Uh, so try to use those that bookmark feature to add it to your home screen so you're not searching for it. You know, at the end of the month, uh, you know when you um, so really take of that of those bookmark features, uh, you know, and and personalize that uh, more to the things that you use. Uh, you know, Microsoft has has come up with these these canned roles um, that have a lot of the features that you might need, but I mean, there's no way that they can. Uh, you know, predict everything that you're going to use. So they, you know, it's probably 70 to 80 percent of what you need. Um, but utilize the, the that bookmark feature to to uh, create shortcuts of the other 20 or 30 percent of uh, you know of other actions that you that you would need. And uh, and now, so in the the latest release, that that includes reports, which 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 wasn't there before. Um, so I think that explore all with the file to, to streamline your, your home screen. Um, the, the next thing I wanted to uh, kind of talk about is the, you know, with the web client, um, you know, this, this won't apply to the nav users, but you can see that, you know, this is a web client. Uh, we can bookmark our you know the address so that we can easily open up Business Central uh, from the web. But as we navigate through uh, Business Central, if I click on Customers, you'll see the the address here is updated. And I've got a Save View here with uh, so I can just see customers that have a balance. Uh, so as I you know as I keep going navigating through the system. So you can see that the URL here is updated. Uh, so the nice thing here is, you know, I could bookmark this, you know, save it to my favorites. Uh, I'll just uh, add it to the bookmarks bar here. So I can save that link. So, you know, if I don't want to go directly into my home screen, maybe I want to go right to the, to look at the customers that have a current balance. Now I can have that direct link, um, you know, save to my to my address bar here, and it would take me right there. Um, you know, so that so maybe that's my preferred way of going uh, logging in is to go to you know this customer screen. Um, you know, the other the other thing is you know if I'm doing some uh, some analysis, maybe I'm kind of looking at these outstanding invoices. Um, you know, doing some research here, I get distracted. Um, you know, and, and have to, to move away from it, I can always just, you know, save, save that, uh, save that again, you know, save that, that customer ledgers. And then when I come back in, I can just go right back and, and pick up where I left off. Okay. Um, or, you know, another way, another thing you could do here is, you know, if I'm looking at a particular customer, I'm looking at the customer card here. Um, and I and I want one of my colleagues to have a look at this. You know, okay, how come you know they're overdue or 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 have some other kind of question? I can send my colleague the link to that customer, uh, and then you know they can go right to the same the same uh, same customer card and and open it right up. They don't have to search for it. I can quickly share that link with them, and they can go right to the record that I that I want them to uh, to to review. So something really, you know, handy uh, to keep in mind, you know, a few. Other than your home screen, you can save that as a bookmark. Um, again, if you, you know, if you're doing some some work, you get interrupted, um, you want to pick up where you left off. You could just bookmark where you were in the system and uh, go right back to it uh, when you're ready, uh, or you know, uh, you know, if you have a, something you want one of your colleagues to to look at, you could share that link with them and have them go right to the to the record that uh, that you wanted them to to review. So I, I think that's really, really, uh, really handy. Um, so the next thing, uh, 
is the document layouts. Um, so this, uh, so something we've, I've, I, I know we've always done some customizations around uh, in the past, working with NAV, uh, and a lot of requests uh, was to have uh, the ability to to email different documents to different uh, individuals. I'm going to use, uh, I've got a Costco as a customer here. Do a quick search here. Pull up the, the Costco customer card. Uh, so in the past with NAV, you, we could email, you know, order confirmations, invoices, packing lists, uh, customer statements, and we would always have one place for the email. So a common ask would be, you know, I want the uh, the order confirmation to go to to one person, and I want the uh, you know the invoice to go to the the AP department, um, and maybe the the uh, the packing slip or the shipment shipping document to go to a particular warehouse. So we in the past we've done mods for clients that to to achieve that, um, but now you know within uh, some of these last few releases, they've added the ability to have document layouts to customers and to vendors. Um, so in the latest the latest release, they've just added more of the report options here. Uh, but you can see, uh, let me just sort on the, the email here. So we can see, you know, just as an example, I, I have three different emails here uh, going to different reports. So when I, email my invoice out of Business Central, it's going to go to the AP department at Costco. Uh, you know, same with the credit memo, reminder, and the customer statements. So I can define that I want these emails, uh, you know, for these reports. And then, you know, Jim at Costco is going to receive like any quotes that I send or order confirmation. And the shipping document, that's going to go to a different email address. That's going to go to the, the receiving warehouse. So we have this ability to define who gets which report. Uh, and in addition to that, this you can choose which layout that you want the customer to receive. So I know we've had requests in the past where we've done mods to, you know, diff different customers require different information and a different layout on their invoice. Uh, or maybe it's, uh, you know, a customer who is, you know, overseas in Europe or Asia, uh, they they might need uh, different information on the packing slip than you know, say a, a customer in Canada or the U.S. Uh, so so with this functionality, we can not only define which which email address we want to send this to, but we can also choose a different column layout, or sorry, a different layout report layout for the uh, for the basic reports. Uh, They've added a couple buttons up here, uh, which, you know, this copy from report selection, this hitting this button will just suggest all these report IDs for you uh, based on what is currently set up for your, uh, your sales report selection. Uh, and then it's just a matter of assigning the email uh, and the layout that you want to use for each. Uh, and if you use this select email from contacts, that just allows you to see, you know, the list of contacts that you have assigned to that customer and then assign the, the email address uh, to that customer. So this is something I think is, is uh, you know, makes uh, lives a lot easier. You don't have to, to change the email address uh, when you're sending up that document. You've got a lot more flexibility here to, to assign the, the default email address for the different reports. And then when you do have that, uh, you know, a, a a request from a customer who wants a different information on their uh, sales sales documents that they they receive, uh, you can you can define which which version of uh, the report that they should should be sent as well. So I think this is a really great step that the Microsoft has added, and it, it really helpful. Um, so the other thing, if we're if we're thinking about uh, you know sending uh, statements, you know, emailing statements. It's nice to have those kinds of things automated. Uh, so one of the things I think is really easy to use is uh, to set up that automation. 
Uh, and if, within Business Central, we can use job queues to do that. And, and they're really not that difficult to use. Um, we can use uh, you know, the customer statement as an example here. Uh, right off the customer card, you can see I've got uh, scheduled statements. And so this is just a, you know, the filter options that I want to send, set to uh, send to the various customers uh, for, their, for their customer statement. I can choose I want to email it. You know, I can set, uh, you know, filter on a certain group of customers. Uh, you know, use this report to, to set the filters, uh, you know, basically to define which customers should receive a statement by email. Uh, and then once I have the the uh, the filter set, and I and I press OK to confirm, you see a little window pop up here that just lets me know that the job queue is is ready, and just asking me if I want to run it uh, immediately. So I'm just going to say no to this, and it just shows that here we've got the the job queue ready to run. We'll say OK, and so what that did is set up a job queue for me. And so if we go into our job queues, and I've just got a filtered view of a few of the jobs that we want to take a look at. Uh, so, I, so I have a few different views here. So here's the customer uh, statement queue. Uh, so these are really easy to set up. You know, you, you have the option, do you want to, to assign a code unit or a report? In this case, the customer statement is run off a code unit. Uh, and then by default, it, this information's all the, been filled in for me when I activated that customer statement report from the customer card. But if we drill down, we can see the code units that are available uh, for us to, to create the different job queues. Uh, and then it's really just a matter of you know, identifying when you want the job uh, to run. So uh, this this one is going to run at the end of the month uh, on a monthly basis. Uh, the job will run. Uh, ish email customer statements uh, based on you know that that setup in our document layout uh, and send to the to the AP uh, email address or whichever email address you have defined. Uh, so that this customer statement. This one is really easy to set up. This this is all all there is to it. Uh, you know, if if you need help setting up this job queue, you know, reach out to us for sure. But it is really easy to use. Uh, I'm going to just cover a couple of the other ones. Uh, here's one I have running. Uh, so this one is the update the currency exchange. So there is a code unit embedded in Business Central uh, to update the your your currencies. Um, now, I, in this case, I, I have a web service pointed to the Bank of Canada. Um, and so I'm running that particular code unit. Uh, and I've defined that I, I want it to run, you know, I can define which days I want it to run. If I just want it only on during the week, I can just turn off Saturdays and Sundays. You know, now I have it run on a daily basis. Um, and I just specify, you know, how often in between, you know, so basically 24 hours. So this is running once a day, uh, and we can take a look at the the entries that are generated. You know, now we can see, you know, that it's been it's been running. Uh, so it runs every night around six o'clock, and and on a daily daily basis. So if th if this is something that you'd like to act activate, you know, really easy to set up the job queue. Uh, even the web service is pretty easy. Um, you know, if you need some help with the web service, we can. We we have all the parameters that you need to uh, to point Business Central to the Bank of Canada website, uh, so we can help you get that up and and running and just and send you those those instructions. But to activate the job queue, it's it's very very simple. Um, and then here's an example of a report. You know, we have a I have a report uh, running. Uh, and it just shows up in my home screen, uh, you know, in my in my inbox. Uh, but again, it's just a matter of defining which report it is. Uh, so as we, I'll just put this on hold so I can edit it. So I choose the the report option. 
And then when I drill down, I can see all the reports that are available. Um, and I, I've, I've just determined that I want this to be a PDF going to my, uh, my inbox, uh, but you could have it sent to, to Word, Excel, or you know, if you wanted to uh, you know, just have it print on a particular printer, you could do that as well. And again, just we can define which days uh, we want it to occur. Now, the, you know, the, la the last kind of scenario that I'll, I'll show is the, the adjust cost for item entries. And so this is fairly common, uh, you know, if uh, you're, you're finding some performance issues uh, because you have the, that adjust cost routine, which updates all the inventory costs, uh, and you have that running every time you post a transaction, it, uh, it can be helpful to, to, uh, to schedule that to, be, to run off hours or, you know, fewer times during the day. Um, and again, you can use the job queue, which is just, you know, standard business central functionality. Uh, and again, it, it, this is a report that, that is run. Uh, we just have it running once a day, but you could run it, you know, two or three times a day if you wanted. Uh, and we have it running off hours, so it's, it's not going to, to disturb anybody. So, you know, something like this, the job queue, just really easy to, uh, to use. Um, really easy to to set up you know if you if you need some help please reach out to us but it but these things are uh, fairly easy to set up for a user okay so that's the job queue uh, and so sort of the last thing that I wanted to cover um, was just a, a little bit of the you know working with Excel and Business Central and, and how well those things uh, work together. Uh, and, and really, you know, if you have something, an instance where maybe you have another payroll solution and you want to, you know, you, you need a, a method for uploading uh, those transactions to your general journal to post to the GL in, uh, in your ERP, you know, you can use we, we could use the configuration packages, which are standard uh, in NAV and Business Central. Um, just need to, to format that spreadsheet to m match that template. Um, or, you know, the copy and paste function works really well as also. If, uh, if we go to a general journal here, I'm just going to open up this uh, batch. Okay. Slide this over here put these things side by side. If we look at the general journal, uh, there is a payroll button here that allows us to import payroll transactions. Uh, you know, there is an extension that comes pre-installed with Business Central for Ceridian and Outlook, or sorry, QuickBooks. Uh, but if, you, if you're not using either of those, uh, you're using some other solution, or you have the need to, to import you know, GL transactions from any other system, the, the copy and paste from Excel works really well. Um, the, you know, the only requirement really is uh, the, the columns uh, that we have in the journal uh, need to match the same column uh, layout in Excel. So they just have to, they have to appear in the same order. Uh, you don't need the, the heading. Uh, you can just you know, copy all of these lines uh, right here in Excel. And then you want to paste it, just right click or control V right into the posting date field on the first, uh, the first line. We'll paste it in and it will just populate, you know, populate those lines for you uh, really quickly and easily. Uh, so again, the, the only requirement really is just make sure that your columns are in the same order. Uh, and then you just want to paste it right into the posting date. Uh, the first record of the posting date. So that so that's a way you know you don't need to you don't need Endeavor to create some kind of import file or uh, you know some kind of routine. Um, you know you can use this simple copy and paste uh, for for journal entries and paste them right in right into Business Central directly. Now here's here's another scenario where the copy and paste works really well. Uh, you know. If we, I have another tab here for sales lines. So let's say, for example, uh, we have a customer 
um, and they would like to they will like a quote on all these items okay so I could create a sales quote and we'll just make this from the Canon group all right so I've created my sales quote header uh, and then I want to enter the lines uh, I'm just going to go into focus mode this is a handy feature uh, when you're creating purchase documents sales documents uh, if you want to get rid of the the noise of the fact box and the the other header information just by clicking the focus mode it just allows you to focus directly on the lines uh, and and get rid of all the other noise and, and and really streamline the process so now I've got my my sales quote lines and I have a a list of items from the the customer uh, you know with their the item code and the quantity uh, and so I can just simply copy copy those as well and then paste them directly into the sales quote lines so again this this uh, similar to the general journal where we just need these columns to be in the same order uh, you know that we have to have the same same layout here uh, in Excel as we do in our our sales quote lines here uh, and then we can just easily copy and paste them directly in into the document uh, you know I'm using a quote here but if you were to try this with a sales order uh, or a sales invoice or purchase order or purchase invoice um, this the same the same functionality exists so the so now we've we've demonstrated we've got general journal you know for transactions we can copy paste from Excel uh, if we want to do a, a document like a sales sales document or a purchase document we can copy and paste that that line detail uh, from Excel right into the to the document um, and then sort of uh, you know another way is uh, just setting up master files uh, just just adding more information for uh, some GL accounts I have uh, 10 10 new GL accounts that I want to add to the to the chart of accounts I could enter my new accounts and the description right here in Excel uh, and then I can take that information go into to edit my chart of accounts we'll just add a new line here and I can just paste it right in so now, so now I can start, you know, using Excel to to organize my my new master data and just quickly copy and paste that, you know, directly into the to the chart of accounts, uh, which I, I think is really really helpful. You know, we will often get help, asked for help with uh, the configuration package, which is the, you know, kind of the, the the method for importing a lot of master master records into Business Central. Uh, and we'll we'll get a lot of support requests to to help create those config packages, which are fairly easy to use. But you know the copy and paste function is is much quicker and 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 much easier to use. Uh, and then I, I just kind of, I have one more scenario, um, and then I'll wrap up the the tips and tricks here and pass it over to to Scott, uh, and that's. You know, another example would be with dimensions. You know, here is a, here is a spreadsheet. Uh, I want to add a new dimension to Business Central uh, for sales region, and I and I want to have all the provinces and territories and all of the states uh, as options uh, for my sales region. And I took I just downloaded an Excel sheet uh, from the web that had all of this information. So a lot of this this kind of stuff you can get out on the web and, and just and bring it into Excel, uh, you know, which is obviously a really common uh, method for for entering data. Uh, but now, if I want to get this into Business Central, you know, I can use that same copy paste copy and paste uh, function. So let's just go to dimensions, go to dimensions, and we'll add a new a new dimension here. I'll call it sales sales region uh, so I'm just going to use that uh, cop F8 to copy from above uh, and then I can just backspace that to type in sales region 
Okay, so now I have my my dimension created, and now I just want to add uh, the values uh, from my Excel spreadsheet. And so I can just copy all of these, you know, the code and the description. Copy those and paste them in. And so again, it's just, you know, we just have to make sure our columns line up. We don't need the headings within Business Central. We just need to make sure the, the, two, uh, the two columns line up. And then we'll just go ahead and highlight all these states here. And we'll paste those in as well. All right. So, so that is a, just a really quick and easy way to to copy and paste the, the master file data over. You know, something like project codes. Maybe maybe you're using uh, Dimension as a project, uh, and you 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 keep track of uh, those codes in, in Excel. Uh, you know, you could set them all up in Excel with a code and a name. Uh, and then as you as you need to add them to Business Central, it's just a quick copy paste right into right into uh, Business Central. So that that uh, that there were seven different topics there. Um, try and hope try and hopefully uh, give you a few tips and tricks. Um, I'll uh, I'll turn it over to uh, to Scott. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks, Jeff. That was uh, that was fantastic, and uh, thanks everyone for um, for your time today. For uh, general next steps, um, there are a variety of features and functions and new uh, new releases within Business Central. And for those that are on Dynamics Nav, uh, some of these are catch up to functions you already have, and others are expansion and uh, moving above and beyond uh, the standard processes. Uh, so we do have some of these uh, available as well in videos on our website. For those that are new to Endeavor, uh, we're now in our 30th year providing consulting services for Microsoft Dynamics, uh, including uh, Business Central and Nav, as well as GP and uh, the CRM products, Office 365 and Azure, and obviously advisory implementation and ongoing optimization and support for our clients. Uh, we're now over 600 clients across Canada and the U.S and uh, parts of South America. Happy to uh, assist you uh, the best we can and continue to uh, help you get more out of your Microsoft business applications. To reach out to Endeavor, um, for those that are current clients, obviously uh, support at endeavorsolutions.ca is a nice easy way for those that uh, know Jeff and have worked with Jeff on, uh, on your projects. Otherwise, Trish, James, and Steve are all accessible and uh, feel free to find us online uh, via or phone or email. So with that, uh, with that said, uh, thank you very much. Have a wonderful day.